Hello, good evening. You're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. We're so glad to have you. We believe the Lord has been blessing you with this crusade. Hallelujah. It's a healing crusade and the word of the Lord will be coming to you very shortly through his servant. The Lord called him and told him to preach the gospel everywhere. The, the, the total gospel. The, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus is power that liberates me. It's power that delivers me. That's why God has given to me. Go and preach the gospel. Go and preach the gospel. And here is one place where the gospel is going to be preached. Whether you are sick spiritually or you are sick emotionally or you, so some things have been troubling you. You know, when you come before the word of God, you are so bare before God. And God knows you are going to be there. It's not by accident. So I believe the word of God will be coming strongly to you to give you answers. You know, God knows everything. God sees you where you are. We may not see you there, but God knows you are there. And you say, how will they know? How will they? It's not man, but it is God sending a man. And as the word is coming, that God that knows you are there will bring your word to you. And don't forget, you know, this word of the Lord is powerful. It breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Bible says, in Isaiah, I say, my word, which I have spoken, will not return to me void. But it will perform that which I want to be performed, where I sent it. So that word that is coming your way is going to do something, it's going to perform exactly what God wants it done in your life. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome the servants of the Lord tonight. Evangelist, me, Urufemi Ogunari, as he brings the word of the Lord unto us again. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the opportunity to bring you the word of life today. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 13. Uh, starting from verse 11, Luke 13 from verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity, 18 years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus was... Uh, Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. I said unto the people that are there, I said, there are six days in which men ought to walk. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. Then the Lord then answered, answered them and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox? Or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound low, low these eighteen years, be loosed from her infirmity or her bounds on the Sabbath day? And when he has said these things, all the adversaries, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. <clears throat> now, that's the healing of this woman, and um, the number of things I'd like to share with you from the passage. Number one. What happened to the woman did not just affect her physically, making her to be a bending double or whatever. Okay? The Bible says that um, she was crippled over. She was bent over. The spirit of infirmity was responsible, who, bowed, who was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. She was bowed, she was mm. bent, all right? And uh, what was wrong with her, the Bible did not say she was just sick of 
arthritis. The Bible did not say she had a bone problem that made her to bend. The Bible did not say it in a physical way. The Bible said it in a spiritual way and in a sort of diagnosis that have proven that um, what was responsible for the sickness of the woman was Satan. See, verse, um, um, verse 11 says, this woman with the spirit who had a spirit of infirmity. So there is a spirit responsible for a physical condition of infirmity. So there is a spirit called spirit of infirmity. Just like you say spirit of jealousy. Just as you say spirit of anger. But now spirit of sickness. Because infirmity means sickness or disease. So a, there are spirits of sickness that make me sickness and diseases to come on people. Not only that, that ensure that the sickness doesn't leave even if you take all drugs and medicine. It won't go. Why? It's demonic. It's not organic. If it is organic, then you can look for herbs and then look for how to treat it. But when it is demonic, you will need something higher than demons to take care of that. And when something is demonic, it will defile all medical um, solutions. So I don't blame doctors that try to heal people and people don't get healed. I'm sure they themselves will get surprised. But we use this same drug for people that have this kind of sickness and they are healed. Why is this particular one not healed? Most doctors are going to be concerned when they have given you the drugs that is prescribed in their medical books that if, you, if somebody is having so-so symptom and somebody is having so-so sickness, just give the person so-so drug and it's going to be okay. And they have given you the drug, but you are not okay. They wonder why you are not okay. You too wonder why you are not okay. But I don't wonder why you are not okay. I know you are not okay because the devil is involved. This place, the Bible says, this woman had a spirit of infirmity. He didn't say she had a condition of infirmity. That's a spirit of infirmity. That's number one. Number two, that is telling us the source of the problem and the probable solution that we can ever apply. Verse 16, the Bible says, And ought not this woman being the daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound these 18 years? So she's going through a demonic affliction. She's going through Satan's bondage. Bound. Bound for 18 years. And who did that? Satan. The Bible mentioned Satan. The Bible did not say one physical thing was responsible. So when the source of a problem is unknown, there's no way you can get a solution to the problem. That's why doctors say you should do diagnosis. I mean, you should do, you know, go and uh, get social test, get social test, get social test. What are they trying to look for? They're trying to look for what is the causative effect? What is, where is this thing coming from? So that we, when we know the root cause, then we know what to apply drug for. We don't just use random drugs generally. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you have done blood tests, you have done urine tests, you have done bone tests, you have done every test, and everything is showing whatever, and they apply the drug that they should apply for such things according to their medical books, and your case is not being healed, then they get alarmed. What can we do? We have done everything that we are supposed to do, sir or ma. But your case is not getting healed. We don't know what's really responsible. We tried our best. For the past three weeks or four weeks, we've been battling with different kind of things that we think should be responsible. But now that all the drugs we have applied is not yielding, the situation did not change. We don't know what to do next. Maybe we should discharge you. Okay? And then you go and look for a solution elsewhere. As for medically, we have tried everything. We are not getting an answer to this problem. And we don't want to keep keeping you on the bed here. So they release you without a solution. But that's mean, does, does that mean that there's no solution in God? Not at all. There is a solution in God. For with God, all things are possible. There is no incurable case with God. There are incurable cases in the hospital, but there is no incurable case with God. For with God, all things are possible. So that means all cases are curable. 
with God. All cases are curable. There's no curable case with God. Are you hearing? Many, many years ago in the Old Testament, a Syrian soldier had a disease called leprosy. Yet, he's still doing his job as the general in the army of Syria. Going to battles, winning battles. But the skin disease that is on him did not leave him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ezudaka tu fle liku to na sikle dishu to kabotari neke su taradia and do feleti neke su dayata. Let me tell you some things that are not written in the scripture of the story of that man with uh, uh, Naman the leper. It was not written in the story when the sickness came, but I knew when it came. How did I know? The person that wrote the Bible can easily explain the Bible to me more than whatever you see there. Now, the man couldn't have had leprosy before he became a soldier. How did I know that? Everybody that is going, going to any new job, they will do medical checkup for them. And so if there is any disease or infirmity in their body, they won't be allowed to join that particular thing. Whether you want to be a nurse, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a soldier, you want to be a police, you want to be any officer, you will do medical checkup before you start. So if he has something that makes him incapable of service, they are not going to employ him for the service. So I presume and I suggest that he was not sick before he started his military career. So it means that thing came as a result of his duty. That's occupational hazard. Are you hearing? So now the government that he has been serving since the beginning of his career, when that thing happened to him, the government should take it over. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right? The government should take it over. But they didn't have anything they can use as a solution to the problem. So the best they can do is just leave the case like that. But they did not withdraw him from military service. They still kept him as their good soldier. And any time they need him, he will still do his military work and he will still get victory for them. So physically... In terms of his prowess and his skill as a medical, I mean, as a, as a soldier, a professional soldier, he was doing his job and he was getting the result. You understand what I'm saying? But they don't know how to get him healed. And then they have gone to Israel, they conquered Israel in battle, and they were able to bring to their country some prisoners of war, including a particular small girl. And the girl, having been a Jew, who knows that in our country there are men of God there, prophet and pro and uh, anointed man, and when they pray to God over any sickness, the person will be healed and they will be delivered. We even have more of them than we have hospitals in our country. Not that we don't have physicians, we have them, but we have more of prophets and ministers of the gospel who will pray for you and your sickness will be healed. You'll be healed of whatever sickness you have. So this small girl was making boast of the ability of their God and saying it before the mistress. And the mistress now informed the man. And the man even went ahead and informed the king. And they gave him maybe Esther Cole or whatever they used to call. Gave him signature and the official letter from the king to go and meet the king of Israel. Are you getting it? But to cut the story short, the king said, I can't do that. But the prophet said, bring him to me. Bring him here. Then he will know that there is a God in Israel. And they brought him to the man of God. Before they got to the man of God, said, tell them to go to River Jordan over there. Let him drip in that water for seven times. He'll be okay. Uh -uh. The man was feeling bad. I thought he would come out. I came with entourage from my country. I thought he would respect me and come out and see my position. It's not your position. If it is your position, your position should have healed you. Are you getting what I'm saying? You need anointing. You need God. And I'm giving you direction from God. So you, somebody now advise me, you better let us obey. If this man asked for money, we brought a lot of money. If he asked for good, we brought a lot of materials. He didn't ask for anything. So he should just go and dip in water. Dipping in water is a small thing. Let's go and dip. At least let's give them a try. And they did. He dipped himself seven times. By the time he came out the seventh time, the Bible says his skin of his body was as clean as that of a baby. Everything soft, clean, neat, excellently healed. The man was dazed. 
what then was an incurable disease became curable by that simple obedience to instruction, divine instruction. So to me, it was an incurable disease then, and a person of that caliber, general in the army, will have used all avenue possible, every medical thing possible in their generation will have used it, because money was available to do that, position was available to do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yet, no result. But when they applied divine result to a demonic problem, they got a divine answer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in this case too, this woman has been bound 18 years. And the Bible said, with the spirit of infirmity, whom Satan had bound this 18 years. So it is definitely demonic and spiritual. But it's appearing medical. But the cause is spiritual. But the appearance on the body is medical. You understand? So they have been trying to treat the medical condition without really seeing the demonic situation. But the day Jesus Christ came. Now, there is another important thing I want us to know. The woman didn't stop coming to church. Shabbat. 18 years problem, she did not stop coming to church. What an encouragement that whether God heal me or not, I won't stop serving him. I salute her courage. People will have mocked her. They will have said all sorts of things about her. Are you still going to church this woman? Hey, the God that you are serving, that didn't change your condition. You better leave that God than something say, leave me alone. Whether I'm sick or, or healed, my God does not change. I'm going to church. And they will prepare, dress up, carry Bible, do everything. And, and still keep bending on the road to the church. So this day he bent and he came to church like that. But another person now came to church. That is not normal. The pastor of that church has been coming before. All the workers in the church have been coming before. Choir has been coming before. Bible study leader has been coming. Sunday school teachers have been coming. All churches have been there. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there was another person that came today that was not usually coming all the time. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the healer. Parkasia Lipteri de Yagada. And so when they gave him the opportunity to minister in their church, because he's not the owner of their church, you know, the, 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 the head of the church or the leader of the synagogue can say, sorry, we don't allow you today. But that day they allowed him. Wow. And as he came up to preach, look into the congregation and then saw this woman afar off at the back. And then called the woman to come from that place to come out here. He didn't throw the healing to her. Over there, say, come over here, come over here. So when she's coming, everybody sees her condition that she's bent double, still bending like that and coming. And when she got to the front, Jesus Christ spoke to her. Woman, I don't know for how long this thing has been wrong with you, but today that the two of us meet together, that devil that is sitting at your back and making your back to be like riding a horse, today that devil must come down. Whatever bound you and bind you and bound you for years, Satan was listening. Spirit of infirmity was listening. But the Bible has said, they will hear my voice and they will fade away from their hiding places. So with the demons that are responsible, they were hearing the word of Jesus and they know Jesus. You know that demon told us, gave us a secret, said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? That came from the mouth of a demon. So we know that it means all of them, they used to know when somebody is anointed or is not anointed. So when Jesus spoke that, you, you are released from this spirit of infirmity today. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those demons saw Jesus, but they can't say no to Jesus because he has the authority to cast them out. He's empowered by God to cast them out. Are you hearing me? So when he said, woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. The demons that were holding her bound and infirmed before, they lose their grip on him. I mean, on, on her. And so she became free. Then she could lift herself up. What you couldn't do before became easy to do because the demon responsible has been cast out. Wow. Somebody is going to be healed today in the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord is going to hit you heavily today in the name of Jesus.
But before I conclude, I want to say, number one, the sickness of this woman included physical problem. Her back that was bent over. Number two, it has spiritual problem. Her focus has been changed. Instead of somebody looking up, it's now forced to look down. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's no more somebody who is confident. It's somebody who is um, bowed down instead of up looking. So spiritually, something is wrong. Physically, something is wrong. Then mentally, she had been told that there was no hope for her condition to improve or to be cured. So she accepted it that way, but kept on serving God all the same. So mentally, she's affected. Morally, she's affected. Then financially, she will have spent every penny that she had over the years. 18-year problem in the life of a person is not small. Even if it's 18 months, you say 18 weeks, these are troubles. But for years, so spending money trying to get relief from the problem. So financially, she has been drained. And she was attending normal Sabbath day service. And Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham. That means she's, she's a Christian. If we are to talk into this language, to be a daughter of Abraham, then means you are really a Jew. And if you are a Jew, you have a covenant with God that God says that um, I'm the Lord that he let thee. And he said, whatever sickness come against you, I will be the one to take the sickness away. I won't permit the sickness to come on you. Those are Abrahamic covenant. And she's part of that covenant that she should enjoy. But somehow, somehow, the devil that is a bad devil defile all those covenants and still come to afflict her. Okay? But Jesus Christ saw beyond the physical. Jesus operated what we call discerning of spirit. He was able to discern into the realm of the spirit and see that there are demons responsible for this one. It's not just organic problem, but demonic problem. All right? The woman's deliverance occurred during the normal regular service, but Jesus' presence made the difference. May we never have a meeting where we are present, the Bible study leader is present, every other person is present, but the power of God is not present. Maybe the power of God was absent. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in any situation where the power of God is present, the devil does not have an answer. The devil can't stop the activity of God where God's power is present. Are you getting what I'm saying? <clears throat> Let me read to you Luke chapter 5, verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. That is it. Whenever the power of the Lord is present in a meeting, healing will happen. Whenever the power of the Lord for healing is absent in a meeting, there will be teaching, there will be preaching, but there will not be healing because the one that is supposed to heal didn't come that day. But on this occasion, the power of God was present to heal. In fact, that power is what made Jesus Christ to see the woman at the back and call the woman to come out, that today God wants to heal you. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I believe that the equal power of God like that is available to us today. And I'll be praying with you right now for your healing. Are you getting what I'm saying? And that thing that Jesus had that day, that made Jesus Christ to be able to know that there's a woman down there sitting at the back that has this particular problem. God has given me the same anointing. So at times when I'm preaching, I know that some people have a particular sickness. And when I pray for them, supernaturally they get healed. Are you hearing me? Many, many years ago, I was preaching in Ishan, the federal local government area of Ondo State, as a missionary in the village there. And then some young men came from the University of Ife because that was where I graduated before I went to Ishan for um, missionary work as God has told me that that's the place where I will first go to. Um, 
um then i usually organize crusade there so when i organize such crusades some other people from campus university of Ife, will come down to Ndo state because of my presence in that village to come and join me for the crusade so as i was ministering the anointing came and i said there's somebody there you have gone to bath in the water and then you have this thing called schistostomiasis a kind of disease that come on you when you go to bad water to, to, to bath or something. They, they come in through the water and it has been affecting him. Does not when she wants to urinate, there will be some difficulty and all that. And the young man that was concerned came out and I prayed for him. Immediately that thing left him. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God revealed to me that there is a problem somewhere, I don't even need to touch the person. I don't need to lay hand. The anointing that revealed it to me will go there to go and heal the person. It's a strong anointing. Just last year, 2021, I was ministering Arigidi, a cocoa part of Ondo State. And um, I got on the pulpit one of the days and I gave this word when I was ministering to the sick. I said, there is somebody that you have pregnancy that is over a year. How did I know? That somebody has pregnancy and the pregnancy is over a year. I don't know. That's the gift of the Spirit. He just told me and I knew it. I knew it's quite over a year, but not up to maybe one year, two months, three months or something, but it's more than a year. And you know, normal pregnancy of a woman should be nine months. This one was already a year, but more than a year. That was just the way I gave the word. I said, God is healing you right now. You're going to deliver your baby. You will, there will be baby alive, there will be mother alive. You won't die of that situation in the name of Jesus. And if the devil tells you that it's impossible for you to deliver, say lie, you are delivering your baby in Jesus' name. I just prayed like that and I kept on praying for other people. I didn't know that somebody in the meeting, a pastor, part of the pastors of PFN that joined us for the program, immediately went out to call the sister. That sister does not attend the program that day, was in Abuja. Abuja is our capital city of uh, Nigeria. Are you getting what I'm saying? Far away like about eight, eight hours drive, much more, eight hours drive. Could be nine could be ten but at least minimum of eight hours drive from on those states to that place are you getting what i'm saying but over that distance as i was praying and he called the woman that your case is being mentioned in our village though you are not in the village right now you are in abuja but the man of god that is preaching is mentioning your case i know your pregnancy is more than a year and he mentioned that somebody's pregnancy is more than a year and god is healing the person now by the time is i want you to join the prayer please join join up join up and the lady joined up eventually they said not the next day same day while they were going home we have finished the crusade they are now going home same day and a lot of people were in the vehicle and the man was saying please let me take this call all of you that are making noise let me hear the call and eventually got the call and find out that um, the young lady had just delivered the baby and the babies were twins but the day that the man came the second day to come and give us the testimony he said one thing that surprised me about this situation is that this lady that is having this pregnancy and the pregnancy has lasted more than one year and is not getting you know uh, delivered having difficulty in delivery and all that said when the mother of this girl was about to deliver her she had difficulty in delivering of baby too and in the process of delivering the baby the mother died so this is that same girl that the mother was trying to deliver when the mother died that she's now pregnant and now pregnancy is difficult to deliver you already know what the devil want to do the same devil that killed the mom during pregnancy and delivery want to kill her during delivery so that it will become a continuous demonic flow in their family so it's both a healing case but it's also a demonic case so there is a spirit that bound that pregnancy and didn't allow the pregnancy to loosen up at nine months so he's being bound by a particular Satan. That Satan was the one that killed the mother. 
that Satan is ready to kill Hannah. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, but by a word of knowledge, God gave me the ability to see into the realm of the spirit. And I saw that there's somebody having a pregnancy that is already more than a year. So the devil doesn't want to deliver. But you are delivering. The anointing of God is here. The presence of God is here. The power of God is here. The Jesus that saw that woman, I know she has been bound for 18 years. So this one has been bound more than nine months. Are you guys what I'm saying? Tenth month, eleventh month, twelfth month. According to them, the lady was 12 months, one year plus three weeks or something like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it's more than, according to exactly the way the Holy Ghost said, it's a more than a year. He didn't tell us one year, two months. It's a more than a year. You understand? And um, I was so happy. In fact, I named the twins from the pulpit. They called them so, 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 and so, so, so. You understand? How did I know? How did Jesus know that this woman was bound by Satan and that the age of the bound bondage is 18, 18 years bondage? How did you know? Supernaturally. So when the same Jesus is living inside of us, he can do the same thing he has been doing before. Hebrew 13 it told us that the Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you hearing me? So I want to pray with you right now. And I want you to have faith in the word of the prophet of blood. I'm not just talking for talking's sake. I'm talking on the anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So today, every case that is a generational case, something that has already happened to your parents and it's about to happen to you, God is delivering you from that today in the name of Jesus. Any cycle of evil, like this cycle usually come after every so so number of years, and now it has come upon you, it will go in the name of Jesus. Any affliction that is related to your family, everybody in your family to have so so sickness or so so disease or so so disturbance or those so so hindrance, and it's now upon your life, it will live today in the name of Jesus. Because the power of God is to deliver man from every bondage of the devil. Wherever the devil is holding people down, anointing is to deliver them. Are you hearing me? Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus. Everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice today, wherever they are listening from, and they are in this particular situation that has been enumerated and outlined uh, in the scripture today, the Bible says the word of God is what is able to discern the intent of the heart of men and is able to heal even unto the bones and the marrow. Whosoever is having bone problems, bone problems, bone problems, bone problems today that looks incurable and you've been managing it like that for years, dangling, 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 not really being useful. It's not responding to your brain. Your brain should control your leg. Your brain should control your hand, but it's not responding to the brain anymore. So when you want to lift it, it will not lift. You want to stretch it, it will not stretch. It has been like as if it's withered. It's not stiff, not flexible, not flexible. Stephen, the, 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 the tissues and the tendon that are supposed to be making it to be able to be flexible. It's like they are fixed. They are no more bendable or malleable. Whatever caused that, the anointing of the Lord is here today to release you from that bondage. Any aspect of your brain that has been touched by the devil, bound and knotted by the devil, and that aspect of the brain is the one that should control all these other hands and legs that are not working. Now, where the devil touched that, I command you, devil, lose your touch now in the name of Jesus. Lose your hold now in the name of Jesus. Remove your hand from that place in the name of Jesus. Whatever you used to tie that head and neck, where the, you know, nerves and the ligaments that should control the 
hands and legs movement and even brain functioning ability of the brain to function well because it has also affected your ability to talk it has also affected your ability to see clearly and say things clearly all these things are neuro they are affecting brain they are affecting organs of the body so wherever the devil is holding and tying something that is not releasing the flow there should be a flow a flow from your brain to your spinal cord and then to every part of your body but something is holding that there's something holding that flow as if something is blocking where things should be flowing from your brain to your uh, spinal cord and from that spinal cord to all parts of the body so whatever tied the original thing because originally that's not the way you were created you know but right now whatever demonic activity you recreated and on on do something inside your body system as i'm speaking now the doctor of heaven the lord jesus christ is adjusting those things so the demon that is in charge i command you go in the name of jesus lose your grip in the name of jesus untie what you tie down now in the name of jesus and then lose her jesus christ said that to man you are loosed of that bound now, what that bound, the, 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 the thing that was bound is what make her, 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 her uh, neck and her spinal cord and the whole of her back to bend down. You see? So, but when Jesus said loose, so that thing became untied and became loosed. So the same thing, whatever is bounding the, the connection between your brain and the spinal cord and then the organs of your body that should be controlled from brain and spinal cord and they are not responding to that control whatever is bounding i say loose in the name of jesus satan loose your hold spirit of infirmity loose your hold in the name of jesus and the moment that demon lives now and that satanic activity lives now, your hand that can't move will begin to move properly. Everywhere that is stiffness, it will soften out in the name of Jesus. The difficulty to move hand, to move leg, to stand up, to run, to talk, to see, and to do everything will be restored right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As that woman immediately lifted her back as she could lift it, you will immediately move your hand, move your leg, stand up, run around in the name of Jesus. Your speech will be restored and every part of your system restored in the name of Jesus. That's what the Spirit of God is doing. Everywhere there is that kind of problem all over. And anyone listening to me at this time, Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Whatsoever you couldn't do before, freely go and do them. For God has taught you. And the devil will not reverse it in the name of Jesus. You never experience that. And your children, children in the next generation, 10 more generations ahead, they will never experience such in the name of Jesus. It's not from anywhere. It's from the devil. But that devil has top work today. Because God has started work. The devil has top work in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.